Hey guys, I've been wanting to make this video for so long because I love watching people's scary stories or ghost stories on YouTube and I thought I would finally sit down and record it for this Halloween. So let me preface all these stories with two things. The first one being that I myself am not a spiritual or superstitious person. I feel like I'm a very skeptical person and I tell myself I don't believe in any supernatural things but I still find myself getting really scared by certain things. And secondly, when I was growing up, my parents were really obsessed with buying really old, old, like over 100 year old houses and renovating them and that's where almost all of these stories took place. So I was in this environment where it kind of cultivated these ideas in my brain. So I'm gonna tell you a few short little stories of my scary ghost encounters and kind of try and debunk each of them. I know that's not that cool, but I think I can debunk almost all of them. So my very earliest memory of having a scary experience was when I was probably about seven years old or so. I used to sleep with my bedside lamp on. Again, we're living in this very old, old farmhouse in Nova Scotia and I remember for many nights in a row, I would hear this kind of like scritching and scraping noise along the ground and I would kind of hear it like going back and forth next to my bed where that's what I imagined I was hearing and for some reason it really conjured this image in my mind of like a little stick man was in my room just like this little gnome creature made out of sticks and he was running around on the floor of my room and I was so terrified and I I think I remember telling my mom about it and she was like well it could be, just be a bug or a mouse or something. I remember it happening for many nights and being too scared to actually look and see if the stick man was there and then when I finally did look there was a moth but I just couldn't believe that a moth could make that much noise and like stay in my room for like a week or whatever it was. Now I think it must have been a moth but it just seemed like such a loud noise and it was I guess I, I just have a a very overactive imagination that's why I just immediately thought it must be some weird like gnome in my room. <laughs> so in that same house uh, I remember one spring my mom sent me up to the attic to get our summer clothes out from storage so um, if you're not Canadian maybe you don't have the same habits but most Canadians have like a winter wardrobe and a summer wardrobe because it tends to get it tends to get very hot in the summer and very very cold in the winter so even now I have like separate clothes that I can only wear in the winter and others that I can only wear in the summer and they have to get like switched out because that's just the way it is. In this particular house the attic was not upstairs it wasn't its own level it was on the second level where all the bedrooms were so it was kind of like at the back of the building and I was very terrified to go in there. I was around the same age as the previous story. The thing with that attic was that there was only one light in it and it was kind of like a few feet into the room. So it's not like I could like open the door and stick my hand in and turn on the light. I had to like go into the dark attic and then turn on the light like walking a few steps into it. So I brought a flashlight in with me and I crept into the attic really terrified. <laughs> And as I'm walking in, I'm shining my flashlight around. There's all these piles and piles of boxes all over the attic. And I'm kind of just like slowly running my flashlight over them to make sure there's no like creepy homeless man hiding back there or something. As I'm reaching up for the pull chain on the one light in the room, the door a few feet behind me suddenly slams shut. And of course, I drop my flashlight in terror and it turns off. So I booked it out of there and I ran back downstairs to my mom, breaking out and crying telling her I couldn't get our summer clothes out. And looking back on that now, I think there must have been some windows open or something since it was spring and maybe there was a draft that just kind of blew in and slammed the door shut behind me, but it was a terrifying experience. So jumping ahead several years, we moved into a very old house that um, I would say was almost like a mansion. It wasn't a huge house, but it, it had been owned by the town doctor. It was over a hundred years old. It was actually a historical building. It was one of the oldest standing buildings that people still lived in in that town. It had like big arched ceilings. It had like five bathrooms. 
it was just overall a creepy house. It definitely was that environment where I kind of cultivated this like haunted feeling and I we also moved in there when I was probably like 12 years old so I was kind of like heading into puberty and it was all these like crazy hormones and yeah it was just a messed up time so of course when we moved into this house it was not occupied anymore because the lady had died who had lived there previously. The first weird things that started happening in that house was that I had a hard time sleeping. Um, I still do have a lot of problems sleeping sometimes but that was when it really started. Whenever I could sleep in that house I would have really bad nightmares. They weren't um, kind of like fantastical nightmares, they were realistic where it was taking place in our house like in the room where I was and it usually was about someone breaking into our house and murdering my family. So my room in that house was actually the maid's old room so I had my own little mini staircase that went up to my room apart from my parents room my brother's room and in that room there were really tall windows that go from almost the floor up to the ceiling and I remember one time when I had actually fallen asleep I managed to fall asleep and it started thunderstorming and it got really windy and those windows just burst open there was no storm panes or anything like that like it it was just like those two panes that like had one latch in the middle so it didn't hold and they burst open like banged open really loudly I had all these papers in my room of course I'm like I draw a lot so like I had like all these papers everywhere everything just flew around the room it was like a scene out of a horror movie for real <laughs> I started to get this really paranoid feeling and I was, felt like I was always looking over my shoulder in that house and I can remember sitting at the dinner table with my family and looking into the living room with all the lights off in that room and feeling like I could see someone sitting in the chair and in that same room I was watching a movie or something one time and suddenly the TV started turning on and off really fast um, and it kept going like on and off. Since I was so paranoid and freaked out of like ghosts being in the house already, I started screaming and freaking out and of course I was alone in the house but my dad ran back in and he told me that the remote must have been in between the cushions or something but I hadn't moved or anything so I didn't understand why it would suddenly start turning the TV on and off. Another time I was going into one of the bathrooms and it was one of those really small bathrooms like a powder room or whatever and all the lights were off in the house. I don't know why I were like in the dark in this house so much but when I can remember walking into that bathroom and it felt like there was like a membrane over the door the doorway um like walking up to it i can see it kind of like shimmering i don't know how to describe it i know that sounds really creepy like you know when you blow a big soap bubble it looked like that but covering the whole door i don't know how to explain that like i may have just been like telling myself i could see stuff like that my parents certainly did not discourage that type of thing if I told them about that. My mom would say things like, oh, teenage girls are more apt to see paranormal activity or ghosts or something like, like they attract ghosts or something. So I was like, that's great. I can remember many, many nights where I couldn't sleep in that house. I would usually stay up for two nights in a row and then on the third night, I'd fall asleep with the lights on um, out of sheer ex exhaustion and then end up having a nightmare. <laughs> And something weird that happened in that house was my dad's. My dad was doing something in the window of their bathroom and the window suddenly came down on his hand and actually cut off the tip of uh, one of his fingers, which is still gone, like they weren't able to reattach it. And uh, I remember uh, I wasn't at home when it happened. When I came home, there was like blood all over the bathroom. And that was just like one of those things that added to how like messed up the feeling in the house was. Like if that happened in any other house where it just everything felt normal it wouldn't be that big of a deal and then definitely the scariest thing that happened in that house was one night I woke up pretty early in the morning probably four or five and I remember feeling like I couldn't move at all and I looked down at the foot of my bed and I saw a person standing there they were just a shadowed cloaked figure I know that's really stereotypical <laughs> like nightmare material but they were standing there at the end of my bed and they were like completely in shadow, like very dark, darker than the rest of the room when none of the lights were on. And I was absolutely petrified, like 
the scariest I've ever been in my life. I kind of just looked at them for a few seconds and suddenly they disappeared. And <laughs> after a few seconds, I was able to actually pull my, my blankets up and like cover my face. And I remember laying there for like, I don't even know, it felt like at least half an hour, like just so, so scared. Like I had no idea what was gonna happen, if I was gonna be killed by like a ghost or I was just so terrified. And then I was absolutely convinced for most of my life that that was a ghost, a real ghost that I had seen and the reason I felt like it had to be real was because I didn't fall back asleep after that happened like I just waited till it got light out and then I got up it wasn't like I had fallen back asleep and then I could think oh that must have been a dream or something like I had woken up seen this cloaked figure and then I was awake so about two years ago I woke up again around three or four in the morning and I was sleeping on my side and I was absolutely paralyzed again I can't remember if it was on like my my side like in between my ribs and hip or right on my hip and leg but I felt this intense intense pressure like someone was pushing down with their entire body weight onto my side and I was in so much physical pain like it was some of the worst pain I've ever felt and I remember trying so hard to scream or say something like stop <laughs> but I couldn't even open my mouth and it literally was the scariest thing I've ever experienced in my life and just feeling locked in that physical pain was so awful and I was just trying so hard to kind of get out of it but after a f I think it was like a few seconds of that I kind of broke out of it and I was so freaked out I, was, I remember just like gasping for breath and like I don't know if I was even able to breathe during that time that I was paralyzed. Kind of leading up to that incident, I had experienced a few other weird things like that, not where I was completely paralyzed and in like intense pain like that, but where um, as I was falling asleep, I would hear voices in the room where I'd hear like something downstairs, like obviously I'm sleeping upstairs and then I'll hear like a distant noise downstairs. About a year or two before any of that happened, I had started listening to this podcast called Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. I think that's what it's called and they had talked a little bit about sleep paralysis and about how a lot of people's ghost stories, alien abduction stories, um, other paranormal stuff like that can be kind of debunked or explained through this phenomenon called sleep paralysis and that is what I experienced. Sleep paralysis is very very common. A lot of you probably have experienced it. Basically sleep paralysis happens because when we fall asleep our brain has this mechanism to make your whole body lock up so that we don't act out our dreams and hurt ourselves so sleep paralysis happens when you wake up but that mechanism is still in place so that's why you can't move but you feel like you're awake and sleep paralysis can be used to explain um, a lot of things like the shadowy figures, a lot of people who experience sleep paralysis see shadowy figures in their rooms. Um, I think it must be kind of like you're still dreaming, your dream is being like overlaid on what you're seeing in real life or something. I just am so thankful I've never experienced the figures since then. I really hope I never do because that was terrifying and the intense physical pain was really terrifying. Another common symptom of sleep paralysis is hearing noises as just as you're falling asleep. So that's what I would hear sometimes leading up to the event where I experienced like full on sleep paralysis. So I'd hear voices inside my room, just outside my room and downstairs and other random noises that weren't necessarily people talking. So that was the main reason why I actually wanted to make this video because after I experienced that complete sleep paralysis, I went on YouTube to see if anyone else had experienced the same sort of thing where they had felt the intense physical pain because that was the scariest part for me where I felt like I was in so much pain but I couldn't move. And when I went on YouTube, I saw that the vast, vast majority of people talking about their sleep paralysis actually believed that they were possessed by demons or something like that. And I just don't get why you would want to think that you're possessed by demons when you could easily explain those events through something like sleep paralysis and something that's so commonly experienced. And I really feel bad for those people. I'm sure they have their personal reasons 
reasons for using that as a conclusion. So yeah, those are all of my scary stories. Probably not the scariest in the world, but I do find the subject of sleep paralysis really fascinating. And I know a lot of people do experience this. So let me know if you've ever experienced sleep paralysis. I would love to hear your stories. And thank you guys for watching this video. This is probably gonna end up being a really long video. So thank you guys for watching and happy Halloween and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. The book in the series where I didn't like it, but if I had to pick, I would probably say The Philosopher's Stone. Just because it is the first book, it's kind of just introducing the series 